Shall we now turn to the book of Ecclesiastes once again, chapter 7. You'll find it on page 698 if you are using the uh, church Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and we shall read uh, verses 1 to 4. A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. And the title this evening is Mourning is Better Than Feasting. Mourning is Better Than Feasting. Is this true? Is the house of mourning better than the house of feasting? Is sorrow better than laughter? Does the sadness of our countenance make the heart better? Is it foolish to be in the house of mirth, entertainment, and wise to be in the house of mourning? Where do people go when they are downcast? in the pub. Where do people go Where, when there is poverty? In the gambling dens. Where do people normally tell us to go when we are sad? They tell us to go for a movie or to the dance club. But the Bible is saying, and, and that through King Solomon, who is considered as one of the wisest men on earth, that it is better to go to the house of mourning than to the place of feasting. To take sorrow as a cure and not laughter and allow sadness to brighten yourself. And doing this is a wise thing, he says. The worldview is always different from the view and the opinion that God gives, as we read in uh, chapter 7 of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, broad is a way that leads to destruction. And the world teaches us to take the broad way. Our own heart tells us to take the broad way, where there is no difficulties. But Jesus says, narrow is a way that leads to salvation. Solomon talks out of his experience. He has experimented all the pleasures of the earth, all the pleasures of the earth, as he tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes. He has experimented pleasures. He was a very wealthy king and he could afford to experiment many things. He experimented things that the world suggested. He tried the worldview. He believed that this is what a person would naturally do to get out of sadness, to get out of sorrow and mourning. But at the end, his conclusion is quite different. He says, the end of all men is mourning, sadness, and sorrow anyway, because it leads you to death. So why not stay there in the mourning, in the sadness and sorrow, and find an escape? From the, from the time sadness came, sorrow came, shame came, and fear came, the human race have been 
running away from these things. It's a, it's a natural tendency that we have to move out of it. He says, it is better to stand in it. Stand in it. Well, let us take the case of Cain. Cain killed Abel, his brother, and he became a vagabond. He had guilt upon his soul. He had sorrow, deep sorrow. He was ashamed. He was afraid. He did, uh, he, uh, how, how did he deal with it? He began to run away, run away from God. He did not want to face God. He did not want to face his own guilt, his own uh, deeds. He tried to hide from the fact of what he did. He began to run from place to place. He became a vagabond. And he then built a city. The city means enclosure. He did this so that he might forget, put that memory aside. The thought of it made it too painful. He wanted to protect himself from that pain and from that knowledge that someone is going to kill him in return. Justice has to be done. And he was depressed. He was on the run. You remember Adam and Eve. They did the same thing. They were ashamed. And they hid from the presence of the Lord. They ran from the presence of the Lord as they heard the footsteps of him walking. They covered themselves with leaves. They tried to hide and forget God. Forget God. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to his heart sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth what is the inspired word of god saying. It is saying, don't run away from mourning, from sorrow, from sadness. This is not for your destruction, but for your healing. The positive thing is to look at it, know it, understand it, and see that there is an escape from it. There is an escape from it. There's a rescue from it. Many people that are converted to Christ, many people that find peace and joy and salvation are those that had tremendous sorrow, tremendous pain and grief. Those that mourned, those that were caught up in sadness. Jesus says, blessed are those that mourn for they shall be comforted. They shall be comforted. How? If such a person seek for help from the Lord Jesus Christ and obey him and they humble themselves before him and seek his presence in them. So sickness, pain, grief, sorrow has come, as you know, due to our sins and instead of running away from sorrow and pain and grief huh, which leads us to death we got to hold on to God that's the time we must cry out to God because there is no other person that can rescue you from this and give you peace and joy but God alone the Bible says, you will be wise if you go in the house of mourning. But if you go to the house of mirth, meaning amusement and laughter, you are a fool. Sorrow 
sadness may drown in the house of amusement and entertainment but for how long for how long it will return it will surface once the high is vaporized sorrow and sadness will continue to be there laughter amusement and feasting is like allopathic medicine it only cures the symptoms but not the cause so the bible is actually saying face sorrow and sadness stand still know it understand it look if there is escape in sadness itself look if there is escape in sorrow itself go to the one go to the one that can lift away this sorrow and sadness and bitterness of soul is there any truth in this at one point the people of israel spoke against god of course they spoke against god many a times in fact we can say all the time almost all the time but this is now while they were being led into the promised land through the desert and they were sad and they were mourning they they sorrowed why because they said oh god you are giving us only this manna all the time this bread all the time and god sent fiery serpents to bite them and people began to die with the bite of the snake people did not run away they came to moses they began to beg for mercy and they said we have sinned we have sinned please ask god to take away the serpents from us and god had compassion and told moses to make a snake of brass and hang it on a pole and then he said tell the people tell the people that are bitten to look at the fiery serpent that was hanging that was made to hang on the pole and whoever looks at it will be saved god did not tell the people to run away from it and look at the angels god did not say go and find a table of food or go and find and look at some virgins or to go and look for a voodoo man a magician no they were to look at the very thing that bit them caused them sorrow caused them sadness and grief and even death and those that looked at the fiery serpent on the pole were instantly healed and lived what is the lesson here god is saying don't run away from perhaps you are thinking whatever is happening to you is a curse he said don't run away from that curse that is upon you look i have put that curse and have nailed it to the pole i have found a way of escape for you i have designed a great escape for you so don't run don't rebel and don't celebrate evil you know there are people uh that that say okay you are suffering or whatever let's celebrate it you're doing something evil let's celebrate that evil enjoy that evil no that that's not what god want you and me to do you'll fall into a deep, deeper pit of curse no one can take away that curse from you look he says although mankind brought a curse upon themselves through sin yet the lord says i love you so much that i have sent my only begotten son to take your curse upon him and god could not find any man on this earth 
who was perfect, holy and righteous, that the curse of the world could be put upon him and save people? No, every person born on this earth is cursed because of the sin that came, entered into this world. And we die in that curse if we do not know how to escape that curse. When people believe that someone has cursed them, where do they go? They go to a person who has the power, they believe, to take away that curse. And they go to the people who they think can curse others. They can curse their enemy, even with a greater curse. And people don't celebrate curse. They're afraid of this curse, isn't it? There's nothing positive in a curse. People are constantly living under the fear of a curse. They go to the voodoo man, the black magicians, and the witches. Don't you realize, friends, that the curse of God is upon all mankind because we have rebelled against him. And we continue to rebel against him. We heard in the morning this wonderful message that God gives us so many opportunities. Opportunity after opportunity to come to him, to cling to him and to ask of him, Lord, forgive me. It's enough. I had enough. You read the Bible, you come here to the church, uh, in the family, you, the parents tell you from the time you are, you are small, if you are born in a Christian family, so many opportunities. But we just don't want to get out. We want to run away from it. But God can take away the curse, dear friends, and win victory over this curse. The final curse, of course, is death. We have one life to live, dear friends, and after that we are told, judgment. Judgment. Are you ready for that judgment? Or are you going to run away instead of facing it, coming to terms with it, and knowing that judgment can be taken away from you, and you can be dressed with righteousness through Christ Jesus. Curse brings sorrow. Curse makes things difficult. God cursed Satan and the man. So how can you go to Satan for help? How can you go to the philosophers for help? How can you go to the scientists for help to take away that curse, to take away that death? You cannot, dear friends. No, all these are cursed. We are all under a curse. There's only one who can set us free from this curse, and that is the Son of God. And what a wonderful thing, just as we read about the serpent that was hung on the pole, Jesus took that curse upon himself. Our curse upon himself, the Bible says, cursed is the man that hangs on the tree. And Jesus, the Son of God, allowed himself to be nailed on the cross. And on the cross, he took our curse, became a curse, and took our death upon himself. But death could not keep him down. Hell could not devour him. Grave could not eat him up. He rose from the dead. Oh, death, where is your sting? Where is your power? Death is swallowed up in victory. Christ did that. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ took our curse and our death and turned it into victory. He suffered, dear friends. He suffered for your sins and my sin, for your rebellion and my rebellion uh, that was laid upon him. 
and by his stripes the bible tells us by his stripes we are made free there is no escape for us from this curse that sin has brought upon us so god commands us to look upon the man on the cross to look upon that man on the cross his own son that has become a curse for you and me he died that we might have life life eternal god calls people to look upon jesus and be saved from eternal curse god calls people under the curse to look upon the son of god the sting of sin has bitten each one of us he ca- he calls us to look upon Christ Jesus and seek for pardon from him and be forgiven god calls people to look upon christ the savior and seek for new life and that this curse be removed so that no curse will ever touch you again and once you are in christ indeed there is no curse that can enter into you for you are freed and you'll have eternal life you cannot find escape from this curse in the house of laughter can you dear friends you cannot find escape from this curse in the house of entertainment and amusement in the gambling dens in the pub on the dance floor in the things that you smoke or drink or eat no there is nothing nothing on this earth that can free you from this curse you cannot find this curse removed in the many women or men you sleep with sex cannot do it drugs cannot do it nothing nothing can do it not in the money that you accumulate there is nothing in the world that can make you forget this curse and remove this curse at the end it will bite you it will devour you forever forever so don't run don't try to forget and don't celebrate evil face it you know many times we say oh i want to do it but i cannot do it i want to give up but i cannot give up so let me celebrate it and might as well enjoy it that's the wrong attitude dear friends because it will only take you deeper and deeper into hell so face it look at it the man that has destroyed the curse hangs no more on the cross nor he is in the grave he is risen look on the risen lord take your curse to him take your sorrows and your grief to him sorrow pain grief helps us dear friend it helps us to go to our creator and our savior go to christ jesus the son of god who emptied himself for your salvation and peace and joy he is the only one he says come to me come to me all ye that labor and i have you laden and i i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your soul for my yoke is easy and my burden is light definitely his commands is sweeter than honey definitely his commands are lighter than the curse that we bear of sin within us and all the sorrow and the pain that we go through come to christ for his yoke is easy and his burden is light now that you know where to go in your mourning mourn for your sins in your sadness be sad for your sins for this is the root cause of sadness and mourning and pain the cure the rescue the escape is in Christ Jesus 
who has taken your curse and my curse and he has died and he is risen again and all authority is given to him dear friends that every knee shall bow every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord so there is hope there is hope for every one of us and that hope is Christ Jesus let us pray O oh, gracious Father, this curse, this guilt that we bear is like the bottomless pit. It is never ending. In Christ Jesus, Thou hast given us hope. Thou have made us see His light in the dark tunnel. O oh, Lord, help us to see His arms reaching out to us which is there before us, help us not to turn away from it, but to grab his hand. And, O oh Lord, we know he will certainly lift us up from that pit and give us life. O oh Lord, our God, help us to put our trust in Christ Jesus. Even tonight, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we take hymn number 553?